I'm going to get started here by authenticating into my dev hub org. If you don't know how to do this, you can check out my previous video on how to authenticate through a trailhead org and creating a scratch org off of your trailhead org. It ends up being a little complicated because in some areas we need to create a new user. And if you haven't done it before, there's a lot of a little bit of setup involved with it initially but you'll be seeing that walk through here. So I'm going to reset my password, use that username, go through the email prompt on the other screen to reset my password. And once that is done, I will be able to log in and at least have access through my trailhead org with the dev hub and having that enabled. Once this finishes, we'll be able to go back into Visual Studio and we can see at the bottom there in the output panel, it says that we need to, we are authenticated, we can go ahead and close the browser. So that is step one. At the bottom left, we can actually see that there is still no default org, which is something that is going to change once we do the next step, which is actually creating our scratch org and setting that scratch org as our default. We're gonna press Control Shift P to open up our quick pane up here that has a bunch of actions preset in here going to click on create a default scratch org. We're going to use all of the standard scratch definitions. In later videos, I'll go over how to change the information in here so our org gets set up a little bit differently. Pick a new alias. And then in here, we're going to pick the number of days that we want to have our scratch org live for. So scratch orgs, they only live for a certain amount of days, either one to 30 days on this particular one and whenever I'm doing a lot of testing to train myself to use Salesforce DX properly, I like to go ahead and set it to one day because it forces me through repetition to master SFDX and scratch orgs. There we go. Our scratch org has been successfully created and we can see at the bottom left that round robin zip code is now set as our default org that is uh, selected. Perfect, so we're gonna press Control Shift P again and open up that org that we just created. Pulling it up on another screen here. Here we go, our freshly minted scratch org and we are going to finally start the configuration of what is necessary for the zip code round robin. Next, we're gonna go into the object manager and go ahead and create a new custom object calling this one zip code. Filling out all of the pertinent information. I'm gonna set this to an auto numbering format just so that we can understand the full complexity of how many zip codes are being created. And then I'm going to launch the tab wizard um, so that new tab can get created. Oop, I clicked on the wrong thing. That's okay. I will be able to add it uh, in a tab. I'm trying to go back really quickly. So now our zip code object is created. Let's create some new fields here that will be able to house the zip code themselves. This is a text field and I'll just name this zip code. Put in the length of five. Normal zip codes are five. We're not going to worry about the dashes for right now. Mark it as an external ID, just so there's a little bit of indexing on it, and place it on the layout. Next, I'm going to create a lookup field for the person that I'm assigning it to. You can see that we're gonna go down to users here and add that in. And the overall description of this project is in the bottom below. So be sure to check that out and you'll be able to see all the details around this. Just creating a tab here really quickly, just because I missed a step before, adding it to the layout since this is my scratch org. All right, so let's create some zip code records. I'm gonna go in here and hit new. And this is just to help you guys visualize what is happening behind the scenes. Creating a user here, gave them a zip code. 
And we also need to create another user to assign them a zip code as well. So I'm going to go back into the setup and create another user. One thing to note here is that I haven't actually found a way to create Salesforce users inside of Scratch Orgs. This is intentional on Salesforce part, as far as I can tell. You actually need to create users via SFDX and in the console itself. So this error pops up saying the process is unable to finish. You need to shoot back into the configuration folder inside of your SFDX project create a user-definition.json. I'm gonna paste in some boilerplate that I got from the Salesforce documentation on creating users in the SFDX and then Scratch orgs, and you'll be able to find this in the description as well. Updating the information so I can actually get the email. It doesn't matter that much because we're not using this user to log in, but just to be safe and we can use this as a template for later on, I'm going to uh, fix the information. I'm going to type this out in the terminal or paste it into the terminal because the SFDX extension does not have a preset for creating a user. Perfect, looks like everything went through there. Now I can go back into my zip code object and add another user, which is going to be Hobbs with the same zip code because of my round robin, I want it to rotate from the first person, which was our user, then to Hobbs and continually repeating that over and over. And if I added a third person, then it would you know, continue to rotate through the round robin. So there we have it. I've set up everything that I need to do the zip code round robin, final touches just so that I can see everything in the list view. Thank you guys for watching and check out the next video where we go over the code for the round robin trigger.